Okay, so Michael, great to have another member of the Mighty Midas Network uh, on the show with me. So welcome. We have a lot Thanks. to talk about. I mean, we have a lot to talk about. So let's just jump right into it. So let me start by asking you this. Alexander Smirnov has been indicted and he admitted to the FBI that Russian intelligence was the source of his disinformation on the Bidens. Do you think that this will end the House trying to impeach President Biden once and for all? Well, in a normal world, it would. Michael, thank you for having me on. Look, Smirnov is obviously an asset or an agent of foreign intelligence. He self-reported that. He had been a lower level guy with um, sort of a passing connection to Burisma, the oil company in the Ukraine that in Ukraine that uh, um, Hunter Biden had been on the board of, and then changed his story mainly to harm Joe Biden as part of a Russian misinformation campaign to try to undermine Joe Biden's credibility, claiming that while he was vice president, he took a bribe for $5 million, along with another five to his son. And, and that was the, it has been the centerpiece, the crown jewel of Jim Comer's MAGA oversight committee has been, ha ha, we finally have it, the smoking gun we were looking for. And now forget egg on their face. They've shot themselves not in the foot, but in the head related to this information because even David Weiss, the special counsel who I have my own problems with on how he's handling or mishandling the Hunter Biden prosecution, even he knew a lying confidential informant when he saw it and how to prosecute somebody that originally was cooperating with the prosecutors against Hunter Biden until they realized that the guy was a liar. But more, as you're saying, in the affidavit or the, or the uh, motion that was just filed by the government in Nevada in order to keep Smirnoff, who's, who got picked up in Nevada, uh, keep him in pretrial detention, they, they basically said he is a Russian asset and the Russians are trying to run a disinformation campaign in order to impact and influence the 2024 election. And for who would that be? Obviously helping Donald Trump. So it's not a Russia hoax. It's a Russia, China, and anybody who's against our country. They've been constantly using a, dis, a disinformation campaign, mainly through social media, but also using people like like uh, Alexander Smirnov in order to influence, to get the result in the election that they, the Russians want, not what the American people want. Yeah. And one of the things that we absolutely know is that this is not the first time that they have done this. I mean, I want to refer back to the Steele dossier. We're talking about another document that somehow managed to find its way into the halls of Congress, right, through the hands of many different people, all with the allegations, right, that there was nefarious shit going on. You know, another interesting thing about the comparison, because the Steele dossier was predicated off of, at least as it related to me, I'm not talking about the Steele dossier in its entirety. I'm just talking about the 11 allegations that they raised against me in it. But what I found interesting, well, it's $5 million to Joe Biden and $5 million to Hunter Biden, right? $10 million. The same $10 million that they claimed that I traveled to Prague with in order to pay off Russian uh, compromats to get Paul Manafort out of trouble. There's something about this $10 million number that they like. I mean, it's in fact, too and coincidental. To your point, in the papers that were just filed by the special counsel, special prosecutor, uh, again, this is Hunter Biden's special prosecutor that's now forced with egg on their face to prosecute a confidential informant that they thought was cooperating with valid information against Hunter turned out to be a lie. Of course, it didn't stop MAGA. But even in those papers, Michael, there's a note, there's a mention of the Compromat program, which is, you can explain it more, but it's compromising our election system by using certain assets. Exactly. And and that the $5 million number is also shows up because that's an amount that's almost identical to what Truth Social, uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, social media arm, took in through a bank that was related to Smirnoff and Putin. I mean, it's 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 amazing. And if I'm not mistaken, Weiss was actually appointed by Trump. So it's 
again, it's it goes right back to our Department of Justice. It goes right back to our Attorney General. I mean, think about how crazy this is that you're going to put into the hands of a Trump asset, somebody, a special counsel, to look at the president, the current president of the United States, and even he can't find the connection between the allegations of Smirnoff and the Bidens. And yet it doesn't make a difference because fucking MAGA, no matter how you try to slice it, refuses to acknowledge that Hunter Biden is not on the take, that Joe Biden is not on the take. And of course, what do they point to? Well, why would somebody pay Hunter Biden $5 million in order to sit on a board, all right, uh, meaning Burisma, when he doesn't know anything about energy? Can I give you one quick little comparison there? <laughs> why the fuck was Ivanka Trump sitting on the board of Trump Entertainment Resorts, a casino company, when she doesn't know shit about running or managing or anything to do with casino operations. Why was she conducting foreign policy? Well, that's a whole nother story. We haven't even gotten into the $640 million that she and Jared made while they were senior advisors to the president. But I'm talking about when she was on Trump Entertainment Resorts board. And this is all the while that the company was still in Chapter 11 receivership, he got paid $250,000 by Trump Entertainment Resorts for being a part of that board. Each member of the board got paid a quarter of a million dollars. Let, let, on that note, Michael, let, let me straighten it out for the audience who, I, who, I, who is much more sophisticated than most people give them credit for. They're supremely sophisticated. Your audience might as touch audience. Board members are picked, independent or otherwise, for a, for a particular purpose. And they're paid anywhere from hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. It's just the dirty little secret of, of serving on boards. People with last names that have resonance in our society, whether they're Kennedys or Bidens or Clintons and fill in the blank on the Republican side, Reagans and the things, they, uh, people that run public companies, often want to be associated with these glamour brands, these political families, not because they think they're going to buy influence because of it, but because they're going to get the halo effect of having these people associated with their companies. James Biden just gave some fiery testimony today at Capitol Hill against MAGA and basically said, if you think my brother is the reason that I've been or had some success in business, then you are either you know, uh, grossly um, uh, misapprehending that or you're liars. Because just you're allowed to have your family name and you're allowed to benefit from that as long as it's not fraudulent, as long as you're not doing anything untoward or illegal, you're allowed to benefit from it. I mean, Michael Popak is not gonna be able to get on a board probably of Burisma and, and it's okay that people with Trump or Biden's last name get on there as long as we recognize that's what's going on and not allegedly corruption. Although on the Trump side, we, we do think that they were trying to curry favor with a sitting president in, in, in order, you know, and did deals, as you know, did deals with Trump in order to uh, try to change foreign policy. Yeah, but Michael, here's the thing. All of K Street in Washington, D.C., so maybe they don't have the Kennedy last name or the Trump last name or the Biden last name or the Reagan last name or the Bush last name. I, I get that. But all of K Street in Washington is made up of consultants. And these consultants somehow have a connection to the administration. I was, I was on, not on boards, but I was brought on as consultants to major, major multinational companies, simply because I was the personal attorney at the time to the president of the United States, to Donald Trump. So these people brought me on, not to sway influence, right not to reshape or rewrite policy like the Magnitsky Act, right? I had mm -hmm. nothing to do with any of that. I did no lobbying. I did no government relations work. They wanted to understand from an insider's perspective what Donald Trump thought about certain things. 
And because I was by that lunatic side for over a decade, and there were so few people that had that connection to him that were not part of government, I became a hot commodity. So mm -hmm. I understand what Hunter Biden is getting. He has the Biden last name. And you know what? Fuck it. That's just the way the system works. Yeah. And it's not so much what he's getting. It's what they're getting by having credibility, uh, by having the gravitas of somebody that others outside can speculate. But but as long. So this question, what did Hunter Biden ever do? He must have been corrupt. He must have, you know, given Joe Biden money just as a fundamental misunderstanding of how boards work and how people get on boards and the value to the company to be associated in proximity, at least with celebrity or popular, uh, you know, people that have brand names that are well known. You know, the funny thing, too, is you take a look at some of these law firms. Why did, for example, Greenberg Traurig, why did they pay Rudy Giuliani before he was the fucking lunatic Rudy Giuliani with the shit running down his head, right? Why did they put him on the letterhead of their company? Because he is a known brand. He was the former mayor right, of, of New York. He was known as, as well as a former head of the Southern District of New York Criminal Division. He had a reputation, and they wanted to be able to, to use that name recognition, to use his reputation. And as a result, they paid him a salary in order to be on their letterhead. There is nothing illegal about this. So no. the part that I just find, uh, what's the word for it? Disingenuous by the mm -hmm. GOP is when they're now trying to bring up an impeachment hearing based upon Hunter Biden's relationship to Burisma and to, you know, hold Joe Biden accountable. I don't understand how they thought that they were going to get past the very basic 101 course in terms of bringing a legitimate impeachment before the citizens of the United States of America. Well, it's also the height of hypocrisy because they, they serve a master in Donald Trump whose entire family has been a kleptocracy along with Donald Trump in the White House, lining their pockets in a way that likely uh, uh, violated the emoluments clause of the Constitution. The old post office comes to mind, converting it to a hotel, requiring people who had business before the government to stay in the hotel. I mean, the, all the money that Donald Trump made from the old post office hotel is because it basically the word got out directly or indirectly that if you want to do business with the White House, and I mean that business with the White House, you better stay on Trump properties wherever you go. And, and they all lined up to do it. The Saudis did it. Indians. The Indians did it when they look came at here. Live, look at Live Golf now with, with all of the golf courses Absolutely. that, that, that Absolutely. they're doing. You think that this wasn't pre-negotiated early on? Right? All of a yeah. sudden, they're having it at, at Miami, at the Doral. They're having it at Bedminster. They're having it wherever Trump wants them to have it. Because well, that's really relining this. Trump's family, Jared, as you mentioned, Ivanka, and the deal they made you know, uh, with the Saudi money, that is a direct result of them trying to curry family with the Trump family because they know your old boss, sorry, is transactional, yeah. even when he was president. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this, with all of these false allegations against the Bidens taking bribes from Burisma and other things, right? A lot of this stuff was made public by Senator Grassley, by Jim Begg Jordan, by Schmucky Comer, right, on Fox <laughs> News. and wherever else that they could, you know, pass this message. You think that Hunter could sue the House? Or what might Hunter do to exonerate himself and his father? Well, he's certainly putting aside for a minute the defamation um, lawsuits. We can talk about that in a minute. His Abby Lowell, who's done a really great job taking over from prior counsel for Hunter Biden. I mean, they came out firing yesterday. They filed like seven or eight motions to dismiss against the indictment in California uh, and have said basically that the entire prosecution was corrupted from moment one by reliance on fake FBI informants and and confidential informants like Alexander Smirnoff. Um, 
because it's almost like the fruit of the poisonous tree, right, Michael? They yep. start with a lying sack of, you'll fill in the blank, a shit. lying sack of shit, thank you, uh, who's completely made up out of whole cloth, fabricated in order to harm Joe Biden's electoral possibilities that Joe Biden, think about this, claiming that the president of the United States when he was vice president took a $5 million bribe. Think about that. That got so little attention because you know people have fatigue through the media of any kind of allegations like that. Well, of course he did, or whatever their thought was. But that if that is part of the foundational um, evidence uh, or uh, working theory of the FBI and David Weiss, the special prosecutor, you know, how do you untangle that? And how does that not infect uh, the entire prosecution against Hunter Biden when you when you rely? And then, of course, um, Comer and the rest of MAGA, you know, they don't they don't care whether the information is true or not. That's why Grassley uh, released the FBI uh, witness interview with Smirnoff, because they were just trying to smear Joe Biden and they didn't care about the truth. Because, as you know, well, Michael, once the lie is out there, the lie travels around the world before the truth gets its its shoes uh, yep. tied and 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 the and the retraction of it that it was wrong what we said shows up on page 42 of the New York Times no, in no, five, in 5.1. Yeah, not Perfect. even it doesn't even show up on right. 42. It's added somewhere in a footnote that you can never find because yep. no media outlet, no member of Congress on either side of the aisle will ever acknowledge that they were wrong. Yep. Grassley, Jim Bag Mucky, Dirtbag, Comer, Marjorie Toilet Green, Lauren Hobart, Josh Hawley, right? Um, Ted Cancun Cruz. None of them will turn around and say, you know what? You're right. We were wrong. There were no bribes taken by the Bidens, not Hunter, not President Joe Biden, made by Burisma or anybody for that matter, our information was inaccurate and we apologize to the president. You see, that's what an adult would do. And I yeah. say that because I live this shit. I live this shit with the Steele dossier. I could not convince the media that I have never been to the Czech Republic, that I've never been to Prague, despite the fact that the time period that they claimed that I was in Prague, I was in Los Angeles with my son, with the mm -hmm. baseball coach at USC, hoping that my son was going to get a spot as a big lefty pitcher for the USC Trojans. And then they turn around and, because you're right, you can never disprove a negative. You can never right. disprove a lie. Because when I said that to him, whoa, 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 whoa. What, wh okay, where were you the next day? Maybe they're off by a day. Well, the next day I was actually on television. I was at um, with, with Harvey Levin uh, with um, what's his television show? Oh, um, um, yeah, I know. So you're talking about um, well, Har he'll come to us. Harvey Harvey Levin, right? So yeah. I was with Harvey at their studio. You know, he TMZ? wanted to show TMZ. Uh, I yeah. want he wanted to show me their new digs and so on. So I was hanging out there. Then they said, "Well, what about the week after?" What do you mean the week after? These are the days that they said I was in Prague. Okay. Then they turn around and they say, well, why don't you show us your cell phone? I said, okay. How about I'll also show you my passport. I even let um, a journalist uh, who at the time I think was with the Daily Beast, um, uh, what, what's his name? Anthony Cormier. I mm -hmm. let him photograph every page except for the information page uh, showing every single stamp where I had been and validated I had never been to Prague. I had never well, I'm been. Gonna prove, I'm going to prove your point because before you and I you met. You know the crazy thing? Before, wait, wait, one, one yeah, last yeah, thing. Sure, so sure. then they turned around and they said, well, maybe you gave your phone to your wife or to your son and then oh, you yeah. took their phone or you have a burner phone. I said, whoa, 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 right? Maybe you should wake the fuck up. And understand that no matter what I tell you, unless I had somebody videotaping me 24-7 to show you exactly where I was, you're going to come up with something else that you want to see of mine in order to try to disprove the negative. 
That's my point. Yeah, and 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 to your broader point about truth and um, uh, and the truth coming out through the media. Before you and I knew each other, because people know I'm a voracious reader, I followed that story, and and the first seventy two hours of it. But frankly, lost interest in the story and moved on myself when the truth came out about the fact that you were with your son and the phone and the wife and all that, I had already, frankly, I had already moved on. All I really remembered was the first 72 hours was, did you go there? And you know, what proof was there? Yeah. Then there were others that turned around and said that you may have traveled on another passport. And one woman, she a real fucking anti-Semite twat, uh, this Louise Mensch, right? Funny that her last name is mm-hmm. Mensch, because that's the last thing that she is. She's more like a fucking asshole. Louise Mensch turns around and says, well, he has to have an Israeli passport because he's a Jew. First of all, I've never been to Israel and I'm embarrassed to say that. I've never been to, I've never been to Israel, nor do I have an Israeli passport. And so, and I found it, not only is it inaccurate and is a lie, but I find it offensive the way that it was even brought out. I clearly have to have an Israeli passport because I happen to be Jewish. I mean, yeah. talk about how do you ever disprove something like that? So, you know, it goes right back to my second part of the question. What could Hunter Biden do to exonerate himself? Because yeah. to this day, I have not been able to get the American people, and I mean everybody, to acknowledge that I've never been to Prague that I never went there in order to pay a compromise or, you know, to do any shady shit. Yeah. Well, from a civil standpoint, unfortunately, this is why they get away with it. You know, legislators like like uh, Comer and the rest, they're covered by the speech and debate immunity clause. And even though it's outrageous that they're able to do that, any suit against them is going to fail either under what we call Westfall immunity or under speech and debate. Now, you can try it if what your purpose is if what Hunter's purpose is, is to package a press release as a lawsuit, taking a page out of the Trump world, and just file it knowing that a year or two from now, you're going to lose on immunity grounds, but it doesn't matter. You want to tell your story, you can try that um, and see what happens. Or you write a memoir <laughs> or a book, or you do what, what Abby Lowell is now doing aggressively. I think in the hands of a different lawyer, um, I think the, the the tide would not have turned now. I, I really see the worm turning in Hunter's favor, uh, be, mainly because he's coming off. He got off the mat, off the canvas, and is coming out swinging with with it. And things he's getting gifts, thank God, like compromised FBI informants that are no such thing, which should torpedo and end the impeachment proceeding, especially combined with James Biden's testimony today. There's nothing to see here. There was nothing that was done wrong. And and the fact that the Biden family earned a living at the simultaneous time that Joe Biden did, just look at Joe Biden's history and what Hunter Biden has said about it. Joe Biden made the least amount of money, I am sure, as Amtrak Joe from when he was 29 years old, 30 years old, as he as the youngest senator we've ever had, all the way till now. There were plenty of places he could have made lo- more money, much more money along the way that he did not do. In fact, the 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 uh, Hunter has been on record as saying. They, yes, they had a giant house in Delaware, but it was barely held together with tissue paper and chewing gum because they didn't have enough money to really repair the house. Dad just wanted a really big house because he had a big family and all of that. But they they live by the seat of their pants on senator salary for most of Joe Biden's life. Now, for the few moments when he was out of the public eye, when he wasn't a vice president or he wasn't a senator, which is a very short amount of time, he made a couple of shekels serving on some boards and writing some and doing some speeches. So did so did Barack Obama. So did every so did George Bush. So did, so every, did every former member, president. So did every speaker of the House. Right. So did every member of Congress. They joined boards all along. But you know, it, when I was asking you also about whether or not Hunter could sue the House, I really just want to bring to my audience's attention something which I find so offensive. And somebody who actually worked in Congress. I worked for Congressman Joe Moakley in 1987 and 1988, and I ran those halls. I remember looking at legislative bills, trying to pass one. I literally worked on one bill for almost a year and a half. It was the Safe Cigarette Act to take the um, the uh, the uh, the dioxins uh, out of the paper 
so that it wouldn't burn so fast. And that way, if people fell asleep and it fell into the mattress, it wouldn't catch mm -hmm. fire and all that other stuff. It didn't go anywhere, right? Because the tobacco industry being as strong yeah. as it is. But I never, in my, I never in my life thought I would see a day that a member of Congress would hold up a gigantic picture, a nude dick pic of Hunter Biden, who at the time was going through probably the worst thing as a parent, right, that you could imagine your kid going through, and that's a drug addiction. And not just a drug addiction, but a major drug addiction, that they thought that this is okay to bring to the floor of the people's house. Yeah, it 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 is it is mind boggling to me how low, every time I think they've sunk to the lowest point, they start to dig, and go even lower because be, and why? Because they're being rewarded. They think they're being rewarded by having campaign dollars come in, PAC donations come in, and at, and electorally. Although I I, I uh, the electoral part is not working for them. No, Every special election. Every time, not polling, forget polling, every time the American people, concluding the midterms, has had the opportunity before November 5 to go pull a lever or fill out an electronic ballot, mm -hmm. Democrats have won consistently. It's the only way we're a binary system. It's the only way you can express truly who you want in office and which party your morals and values align with. And every time since before the midterms, there's been some election, including recently with the winner of the with uh, Swazi's win uh, in the third district in New York to replace the outgoing departed ripped out Santos. Every one. And part of it is women coming up strong and going to the polls after the Dobbs decision and things that relate to a woman's autonomy, uh, bringing them, thank God, to the polls and and and. Uh, and having constitutional amendments rejected or accepted related to women's right to choose. And the rest of it is we now have the opportunity. The rest of this stuff, this this BS, you know, they think it's like a sports book. You know, oh, Biden's up by a point or he's down. He's not up or down anything. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out on November 5. He's making his closing argument to the people, Joe Biden, right now. It started about a month and a half ago in Pennsylvania. And, it, and every day he and his surrogates are making the closing argument about what the Biden administration means as opposed to the restoration of the Trump presidency. And if the American people vote their values and vote their hearts and minds, this, this is going to be a blowout for Joe Biden. Yeah, you know, I, look, I don't agree with everything that Joe Biden is doing. I'm not supposed to. I've quoted um, Ed Koch at least 100 times on this show saying from Ed Koch's mouth, if you agree with me six out of 12 times, you should vote for me. If you agree with yeah. me 12 out of 12 times, you should see a psychiatrist. You're not supposed to. Mike, you and I don't agree on everything. In fact, my wife doesn't agree on it. I don't agree with myself 12 out of 12 times. To be right? Yeah. Ever look back at your butt and think you deserve better? If not, well, you should. And this year, introduce yourself and your behind to the best with Tommy John's super soft underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Tommy John's breathable, lightweight, and moisture-wicking fabrics are designed to make you feel that much more comfortable so you could do everything better. Their tri-blend and modal fabrics stretch four times, four times more than competing brands. And Tommy John moves 16 different ways to give you plenty of breathing room. Guys are nuts about Tommy John's comfort innovations like a supportive hammock pouch, and easy access horizontal quick draw fly. So it's no surprise Tommy John sold over, get a load of this, 20 million pairs of their lint-free, fuzz-free underwear, all featuring their famous no wedgie guarantee. With thousands of five-star reviews, Tommy John doesn't have customers, they have fanatics like me. So look, this New Year's, I made myself a resolution. And I call it my balls to the wall commitment to comfort by cushioning my cojones. And I'll do it only in my Tommy John underwear. And here's why you should do it too. If you're tired of sweaty, chafing, wedgie prone underwear, make the switch to Tommy John. Your family jewels and everything else will thank you. 
Wearing Tommy John makes you feel fresher, cooler, stylish, and more comfortable than other brands of underwear. So like me, if you do, you will become a fanatic of Tommy John too. Plus, your most valuable assets are always protected with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee. So go right now and shop Tommy John and get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. That save 20% for a limited time at TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. TommyJohn.com slash Cohen. See site for details. But I will tell you one thing. If you take a look and you, you divide Republican versus Democrat, and you see which group really want to do things that benefit the American people, that show some sort of value, some sort of biblical, whether it's Judeo-Christian value, right? It's the Democratic side, as opposed to people like, you know, Lauren Hobart whacking off a guy in the middle of a Broadway show, right? I mean, that's not the value I suspect that you want to teach your child either that it's okay to sit there in public during a Broadway show and have your, your girl, you know, spanking on your Johnson there, or that you don't want your daughter doing it in the middle of the it's, they, it's the same as the shit that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth on a regular basis. It is nasty. It is racist, sexist. It's misogynistic. It's xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, and anti-Semitic to boot. Those aren't the values that you want to teach. And he could hold upside down the Bible anytime that he wants. Anybody can hold up a book, but he couldn't tell you what the fuck's inside of it. He couldn't even properly talk about, you know, what was it? Um, you know, two Corinthians, you know? Right. I mean, <laughs> Corinthian two. I mean, it's like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Well, he's you know, look. You you know him well. He he was, and I knew him. I knew him by observing. I was in New York at the same time when you were. And uh, no, Donald Trump was. Uh, he ran around town as a some sort of uh, self proclaimed playboy. He never stepped foot into a church except for the times he got married or some of his children or grandchildren. Some at the same time were baptized. Other than that, um, he is not. He's the opposite. He's probably an atheist at best. But you know, listen, the the Christian right has made a devil's bargain. No pun intended with Donald Trump because they don't care about uh, whether the man lives the gospel in his heart. What they care about is that you know abortion and the right yep. to choose got ripped away from a woman, and that's what and that and certain things about education and the separation of church and state being you know we're we're moving towards a theocracy because of the Supreme Court justices that Donald Trump put on, and that's all the Christian right. Um, they see him as a messenger to deliver those theocratic policy mm -hmm. developments. And that's why they praise him and they vote for him and they hold their nose and they vote for him. Because if they're voting for him based on his behavior, his conduct, his morals, or his values, it, it, this would be a no contest. They should. Yeah. They, but the Christian right has made the bargain with the Republican Party for a long, long time. Go back, as you know, to Lee Atwater. Go back mm -hmm. to Karl Rove. Yep. The Republican Party is a very, as you know, is a very narrow-based party. It generally cannot win national elections because of their policies. So they have to have wedge issues. Used to be gays in the military. Then it was gay marriage. Then it was then it was abortion. Then it's immigration. It has and to it, be no, these even issues. before that. It, before that, it was uh, interracial marriage. You oh, know, right, with the right. Obergefell oh, God case. Forbid. Right. So you got to drive your people to the polls on these narrow wedge issues that divide Americans rather than unite them, because your party is a narrow based small tent party and with and that's why we have so much that's why the americans are at each other's throats two reasons one our adversaries promote discontent to keep america weak not strong through their social media disinformation and brainwashing campaigns most of the stuff most of the stuff that's on the internet that's against joe biden is promoted not it's not domestic it's foreign in mm -hmm. its origination 
and and are and we have gullible people here that unfortunately are being brainwashed just the way we used to watch it like in the Manchurian candidate that's one and the second is the republican party pitting american versus american in order to for no other reason but to win elected office yeah i can't believe it. it's hard to imagine yeah. that you know he, here in america we have that many stupid people and i understand you don't have to have a high school education, a college degree, or a post-college degree in order to have some seichel, have some brains, because some of these people are just really fucking stupid. But I want to jump into something different, because earlier this week, you tweeted, and I'm going to quote, I stand with Yulia Navalny, which it's Navalny, right? Along with her video, where she promises to continue the fight, the fight that unfortunately, Alexei Navalny started. Then Elon Musk shut down her Twitter account. He then reactivated it because of public outcry. What, in your opinion, is Musk even up to? What's he doing? Well, I, I, I dropped off of Twitter for a while when he replatformed a series of people, including Alex Jones, and the Sandy Hook um, hoax people, you know, like Alex, it says that the, you know, the, the little children and teachers that were killed at Sandy Hook was either a false flag event or it never really happened. I'm like, you're going to put those people back on? Seriously, I'm out. But you know, unfortunately, there's no, there's no good alternative to Twitter in, or X in social media right now to get a message out. So I felt like I had to return, and I got encouraged by some of my followers and listeners to return to X, and so I did. But um, Musk is a very dangerous cat, um, and it's one that the Biden administration has struggled with. Uh, yes, First Amendment rights, but how to contain. I mean, the fact that he, we had a private, think about this, Michael, we had a private citizen that was making the decision whether to turn on or turn off satellites to be used by the Ukrainians against the Russians in contravention of our foreign policy. And we allowed it. And there was there was speculation that even the Biden administration was so fearful of Musk because he was supplying the satellite information that he would do something drastic that they were kissing his ass instead of using War Powers Act and other things that Biden could have done to nationalize the satellite system and take it over because it, it was part of our national defense, which is what, frankly, I probably would have considered doing. Musk is all about Musk. He's some sort of crazy. I mean, I think his Bible is Anne Rand, you know, Atlas Shrugged and all the people that think Fountainhead, you know, is like a Bible to live by, you know, that he thinks it's all about the extremes of capitalism and First Amendment, everything else be damned. And he does not. He's got no one around. He has zero advisors around him. No one is speaking truth to power there. And so he makes these decisions like, sure, let's take the widow of the opposition leader to Putin, whose husband was just poisoned to death in a prison two days after an appearance in, uh, in his court appearance on Thursday, because they finally needed to snuff him out and snuff out his voice. And I had to double check because my wife's from that region. I had to double check to make sure that she's not in Russia when she decided to take up the torch. And fortunately, I think right now she's outside of Russia uh, because she'd be dead already um, if it wasn't for that. And if we don't do something, and I know Biden has talked about it, if we don't do something, forget about Musk for now, to go back after Russia for what's happened to Navalny. And how about the Wall Street Journal reporter that's still sitting and he's got to be shit in his pants? What about, what about Navalny the woman today? What about the American citizen? Um, she has a dual citizenship. They grabbed her on the claim that she's a spy and they're right. now holding her. It just happened, just happened today. But, you know, can I say something? You know what makes Elon Musk and and. I'll tell you, before all this bullshit of him with the satellites and with uh, taking all of these political positions, I, I really liked Elon Musk before he went ridiculous on Twitter. And I'll tell you, I think that they are somehow ghosting certain people's accounts like mine, right? I have like mm -hmm. 610, 612,000 followers on my Twitter. I haven't really picked up any Twitter followers over the course of the last like year. I mean, which is crazy. And even when I put out a post, 
Right. It gets like 55, 60, 70,000. But people who I see who have 55,000 followers, it, it's supposed to circulate based upon your hashtags and who else is getting tagged here. They, into, they, you know, they have like 800,000 views. I believe that what they're doing is they have some algorithm with certain people that absolutely shuts it down where only some of your most fervent supporters are able to see it. That's really what I believe. But I'll tell you why Elon is stupid. And if you're listening to this, Elon, I'm going to tell you why you're really stupid. What do you think that Donald is going to do on day number one if, in fact, he becomes president again, God forbid, a million times? Donald Trump is a copycat. He is going to do to you and to Zuckerberg and to, you know, and to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, all of the other mega, mega billionaires like Jeff Bezos, he's going to have his SEAL Team 6 grab you, just like Mohammed bin Salman did to his members of the royal family, his relatives. He's going to bring you to Mar a Lardo. He's going to put you in the, what do you call it, in the ballroom, and he's going to hang you by your neck like Mohammed bin Salman did to his relatives until you sign over your fortune. Because that's all that Donald gives a shit about is the money. Fuck you. You think you're worth 300 billion? You stole the money from America. And by the way, you know, Fannis, yeah, he, he, the bulk of his money was obtained by these EV rebates on each and every one of his cars. Right. And those mm -hmm. cars happen to be defective. You're the first one that he's going to fucking string up because you have what he desires. And that's insane wealth. He will take it from you. Make no bones about it. I know the guy better than anybody. I know what he's thinking. He not only does he want to become president to avoid all the litigation and the potential incarceration, but he's doing it because he's going to take your money and the Zuckerberg money, and the Bezos money, and the Walmart family's money. He's going to take everybody's money because nobody needs $300 billion in his mind except for him. And nobody yeah, should and have it. And he will then become, hands down, the richest man in the world. And to your point, I'll do it from the legal AF side. He certainly could use the Department of Justice to use antitrust laws to go after these major companies and try to break them up. And you know the the policy when people vote. I know this is this might sound obvious, but I'll say it anyway. When people vote for an administration and its and its policy decisions, you get it all. And so you, people that are still on the fence, I can't imagine who that group is, but people that are still on the fence about who to vote for, go look at the think tanks that have been established for Donald Trump and what their plans are, and they're in writing about immigration, about deportation, about using and nationalizing and turning the military that's never supposed to be used on U.S. soil against Americans and against immigrants and migrants with rights and constitutional rights um, in trying to set up internment camps and deportation. That's on migrant side. Then if you don't like that, then you're going to hate what he does by who he puts in charge of the Securities and Exchange Commission. That's been the bane of his existence since Truth Social and before. He'll put a lackey there but he'll use it, and as you're suggesting, Michael, and weaponize it by going after the people that were not totally in his camp and or because he's jealous of them. And so you use the Justice Department to file antitrust lawsuits to break, you know what, uh, I think that uh, I think that Tesla's got too much of the, elect uh, the EV market for cars. I think that we need to break that up and promote competition. Crush. But Anything you're else? being nice there, Mike, because you're doing <laughs> it in a way that, um, you know, is potentially legal using, mm -hmm. despite the fact that you're using the DOJ to strong on people. I say it's different. I say differently. I say when he tells you he wants to rewrite the Constitution on day one, when he tells you he wants to destroy our tripartite system of government, he wants to do away with the judiciary, he wants to do away with the legislative branch and confer all power upon the executive branch, meaning to himself, making him the monarch, the dictator, the Fuhrer, the supreme leader, whatever you want to call him. He just goes ahead, has his SEAL Team 6, because everyone's signing loyalty pledges to him. He will then 
incarcerate Supreme Court judges. He will turn around and incarcerate polit- uh, politicians. He will incarcerate members of the media. He will then turn around and have them bring these billionaires to him and do exactly what Mohammed bin Salman did. He hung these motherfuckers up by their neck until they went ahead and they signed over their wealth to him. And Trump will do yeah. the same thing. It worked for Mohammed bin Salman. It will work for me. That's how Donald's the, thinking. The um, the scary part, to prove your point, Michael, is that the guardrails of democracy and the legal and criminal justice system through the Supreme Court barely held when Donald Trump didn't have the opportunity in advance to rewrite the laws and put all of his lackeys in every position of power this, this last January 6th. If he gets back in and gets people and lawyers that are that that swear fealty to him in every key position and has a chance to put one or two more Supreme Court justices on and does all the rewrite that you're talking about, then I'm not sure our demo- the guardrails of democracy will By hold. By the way, there it will barely be no Supreme help. Court judges. My, my point goes even further. There will be no Supreme Court judges. They will not be. It'll be mm-hmm. his judges. It'll be the Trump judge. It'll be the judge. Or just the martial Trump. law. Four yeah. years of martial law. Yeah. And more than Why four not? years because he's already yeah. said he doesn't want to just leave until 2028. I'm not leaving. You see already the, the advertisements for Trump 30, uh, 32, you know, Trump 2032, 36, right? 40. And then it goes all the way on forever. That's not me. Be 100. <laughs> it's not me. That's not say. me saying it. That's him saying it. Yeah, no, I got it. So yeah. let me say, I mean, look, like, to, can I give you, you another you thing that proves question, my Michael. point? Here's another thing mm-hmm. that proves the point. Trump hates NATO. And why does Trump hate NATO? Because Putin hates NATO. Now, Mike, you said recently that Trump violated international law and the NATO charter when he gave Putin permission to attack our allies. How can we hold him accountable for making those kind of threats, especially he's not the president? Well, there is ways to do it. He can be prosecuted for treason. He can be prosecuted for other violations. As you said, we have one president at one time, and it is against the law and the Constitution for anyone else to create a shadow government that runs parallel to the real one or tries to conduct foreign policy. Problem is, back to the top of your show, is we have Merrick Garland, who at every opportunity is either a day late and a dollar short in terms of starting the prosecution, deciding to appoint special counsels and special prosecutors when he didn't have to, and he should have started his own investigation earlier against Trump, putting in the wrong people as special prosecutors, uh, like David Weiss, a former Trumper. You know, he's trying to show off, like, oh, I can put a former Trumper in and everything will come out great. Like, that's not what we want from the Department of Justice and from Merrick Garland. And who, in order to do that, some U.S. attorney who gets his approval and gets the nod from Merrick Garland has to prosecute Donald Trump from, from illegally conducting foreign policy and or committing treason. Because I mean, for him to stand up at a rally in order to raise money and say to our allies that um, if you don't pay up, then I'm going to I'm going to tell Russia to have their way with you and they should attack you and violate Article five of the NATO alliance, which the only time as Joe Biden, our president, said in a clip right after that, the only time. Article 5, which means an attack on one is an attack on all Mm -hmm. uh, of the NATO alliance that's ever been invoked is by America after 9-11. And and so, uh, of course, Donald Trump has no historical view. He barely understands that there are three branches of government. I mean, one of the commentaries has always been that Donald Trump has been and always always will be a terrible student, had no interest in being president, he's, they stopped giving him the presidential briefing book because he showed absolutely no interest in it. Um, he, you know, they, they stopped giving him briefings because he never paid attention. Uh, because his, he's got, I don't know what he was like when you were working for him, but he's Same got, thing. he seems to have the uh, attention span of a fruit fly. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So let me then ask you this thing, because you have a theory about what might happen if Judge Cannon does not recuse herself in the Marilardo stolen documents case. So do me a favor. Tell my listeners your theory 
and how you think that Jack Smith will respond if she doesn't recuse herself. So, you know, the running issue almost from the very beginning of her being picked um, sort of randomly, we can go into that later, uh, down in the Southern District of Florida, there was really only two judges to choose from once they eliminated some senior status judges. And she and, she, and her number came up in Fort Pierce. But from almost the very beginning, when she tried to interfere and got slapped back by the 11th Circuit in the criminal prosecution by the Department of Justice before there was even an indictment, which is a cardinal sin for a trial judge. And the 11th Circuit, including the chief judge, William Pryor, told her so. There's always been a jaundiced view over anything that she did. And we were just waiting for the moment, and it's been over a year, for Jack Smith to get uh, a proper basis to go back to the 11th Circuit and not only appeal a decision of hers or multiple decisions of hers, but seek to have her removed. The 11th Circuit, just like any other appellate circuit, has the has the power under a under a uh, statute to, in terms of uh, regulating and administrating judges that sit under them to remove judges. We joke, you know, I practice in Florida as well. We joke in the 11th Circuit area that it's almost like the Lemon Law and three bad decisions mm -hmm. and you're out and she's got it. Right now, Jack Smith, as I said in one of my hot takes on Legal AF and the Midas Touch Network, they um, there's two right now that are coalescing almost at the same time. Two weeks ago, she made the extraordinary, eye-poppingly wrong decision to, to compel Jack Smith to release the names in the public record of at least 12 confidential witnesses, including those that are grand jury witnesses, because she applied in the completely wrong legal standard, a standard that was listed in her own cases that she cited in her own order, like she doesn't know how to read. And it was so bad that Jack Smith, in a motion to reconsider, told her, you are making a major blunder here, so major that I'm going to call it for what it is, clear error and the creation of manifest injustice. That's That should be spine chilling for, for a judge to have a prosecutor say, you're making reversible clear error yep. and you're creating manifest injustice. So he's boxed her in, Michael. If she if she doesn't, she said, oh, well, maybe I'll have full, wait, well, don't, don't, don't tell him, don't give the witness list out yet. Let's have a let's have briefing on this. Right. right. So she thought maybe I screwed up and the bridge is out ahead and she better turn back. Yeah, so I mean, she's Friday, fucking with the wrong guy. She's fucking with the wrong oh, yeah. guy when it comes to Jack Smith. Can, can I give you another example here? So during Laura Ingraham's recent Trump interview, he said, when I say he, fucking Trump said that he withheld the documents at Mara Lardo under the Presidential Records Act and a series of other incriminating statements. So my question is, why can't Jack Smith use these statements against him in court? I mean, they're admissions to. by the defendant. He will be able to. The, great, the greatest thing about Donald Trump is he manufactures and creates new evidence against him in real time. And right. we, during, during the E. Jean Carroll rape punitive damage second trial, in real time, Robbie Kaplan, who's been on my show, the lawyer for E.G. and Carol, they were printing out in a printer off a laptop in the courtroom new social media posts while Donald Trump was sitting in the room, because obviously he has lackeys do it, and used it as evidence to present to the jury. Same thing happened with, with uh, Rudy Giuliani in the defamation case. Things he was saying outside the courtroom, minutes later, were being entered into evidence against him inside the courtroom. So we can count on Donald Trump to create an uh, incriminating, um, inculpatory evidence in real time during the pendency of a case. I mean, do you think that these new ugly gold shoes of his maybe have <laughs> mint flavored soles or something? Because he keeps shoving his foot into his mouth, right? I mean, you're right. Real time, they're introducing documents. Literally, Your Honor, Five minutes ago, this is what the defendant posted. I mean, I don't even know how you can make something like that up, If even if this was Hollywood. But, you know, can I jump forward and ask you sure. this? Because Trump's legal fees. I've heard you say on your show that he's <laughs> spending, give or take, $10 million a month paying lawyers alone. Now, I can tell you, that ain't the Donald Trump that I remember. This is a guy who never paid anybody. 
I mean, he would t- he would call me. They would throw a uh, a file at me. Michael, go call these lawyers. Tell them we're not paying them anything, right? So, ten million a month. How long until he's out of cash? And in your opinion, is he headed for another bankruptcy? Yeah, that's that's good. Uh, a good question, Michael. The calculus so far is he's out his packs that he's been using, Save America and MAGA. Inc., which I think Alina Haba is in charge of, our Save America PAC, which has been his primary vehicle, separating his his sucker followers from their money, which he's very good at, that he's been using for his legal fees, will be out of money by July. That the burn rate, the monthly burn rate on the, on the dollars puts him out of money in three months. He then has to use, they've already told in the little fine print, although nobody reads it, that every dollar that you contribute to MAGA Inc. PAC um, seventy percent of it, ninety right, cents. ninety cents is going for his legal fees, which well, is also a giant has discretion. He has complete discretion over, meaning he yeah. could use it for legal fees. Yes. he also used it to lease his airplane. Right, and now Save America Pack is so busted that they had to take, claw back a forty or fifty million dollar loan that they made to MAGA Pack. They needed it back to plug a hole in their balance sheet to be able to continue to pay at $10 million a month all of these law firms. By the way, I, I also question how these law firms have racked up that much. Yes, he's got four criminal trials and a whole bunch of other cases. How And, and he's already had a, you know E. Jean Carroll trial twice, multiple motions and arraignments, motion practice, appellate appellate cases, the New York Attorney General case, and and a new case for Stormy Daniels, of course, that you're going to be very involved with coming up in March. But he does not have, back to your comment about Greenberg Traurig, and I'm a lawyer, as you are, um, he does not have the American lawyer top 10 law firms here charging $1,500 an hour. He has Four lawyers that nobody ever heard of, I, although I knew Chris Geis from Florida, four lawyers nobody's ever heard of. He's got a, I, I joke on my, when I do hot takes your pod, my podcast on this, he has four lawyers, not four law firms. He has four lawyers with two associates and two paralegals handling all of the legal matters. Now he deserves that because nobody wants to touch him with a 10 foot pole. But how Chris Keis, Todd Blanche, John Loro, John Sauer, Alina Haba, and 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 Cliff Robert and a, a couple of, of associates are racking up that much money, and now he's brought in Harmeet Dillon, who we know, <laughs> know socially or professionally, who who ran for the RNC chairpersonship and lost, got her coming in on appeals, but. Um, in terms of the bankruptcy, look, he's no stranger, as you know well, to bankruptcy. I mean, I watched all three or four Atlantic City bankruptcies as a kid from New Jersey. I mean, he's the only person I know of, and I've, I've been involved with the businesses that have been in the sports gaming business. It's the only person I know that found a way to lose, lose money, money, the right? house to lose money running a casino, I, which prints money. I, it's so, true. Yeah. I mean, the odds are... The odds are in your favor, uh, whether it's the you know slot machines or to the table games. It makes no difference. Uh, I, yeah. I don't get it. But you brought up something about the RNC. And that, of course, brings me to a whole nother question here. I mean, Trump wants to put his daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, to take over the RNC, the Republican National Committee, as a co-chair, basically – as Laura herself said, so all that their money that's raised goes to him. Because the only thing that, in her opinion, the RNC is supposed to be doing is ensuring that Donald Trump becomes president of the United States. So it brings me to what about the down ballot Republicans who actually need the cash to stay in their campaigns, to stay in their elections, and to try to win? What happens to Good them luck. now? All the oxygen is going to get sucked out of the room by Donald Trump. Look, every every standard bearer who becomes the nominee for a party ultimately is supposed to direct, even though they're not supposed to coordinate, the national committee for their party. So that is not the surprising thing. The surprising, you know, Obama put in who he wanted for the DA. Everybody does. You do. You wouldn't. You would not do take the opportunity to do that. But this so blatant and transparent announcement that this is just going to become an arm of the Trump campaign, and they're going to. And he's got, as you know, from the bankruptcy uh, comments uh, analysis that we just did, he's teetering on the verge of bankruptcy here and there. I'm not sure this Truth Social SPAC deal 
is going to put as much money in his pocket as people think it's going I can to. Tell you, sir, I can tell you emphatically it will not. Right. So that's what he thought the bailout was going to be. And there's a question as to whether that falls within Barbara Jones, the monitor's purview or not, or he can have new money that he can set up in Florida with another corporation. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, however, his every dollar that gets sucked out of his campaign uh, bucket to go for legal fees is one less dollar that he has to fight Joe Biden and win. That's why he's so pissed off at Nikki Haley, because he's spending money he doesn't really have because he's got a giant hole in his bucket, which is the attorney's fees. Because he look where Joe Biden is at this moment, so far ahead in fundraising. We haven't even talked about the DNC and how much money they have. So Joe Biden's going to have a half a billion dollars to crush uh uh, Trump and Trump's going to have like a hundred million dollars and have to get away with gold sneakers at Sneaker Con in Philadelphia as a major uh, rally event. Yeah, I mean it's so funny because most people don't realize. And when I said that this whole bullshit about his share is going to be is worth you know four billion dollars and so on, I want to remind people on some of the IPOs. You know, IPOs do very well because of the hype. That's coming out. Now, what's the hype here? They have like virtually no users on Truth Social. <laughs> I mean, that's the crazy thing. It's not like Twitter or X or, you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram threads even. You know, well, threads isn't doing so good either. But they, it's not like they have a billions of users like these other platforms. They have millions of users with no income. Remember the IPO for Uber. Remember the IPO for Etsy. Remember the IPO for Smile Direct Club or Cast for Sleep. I mean, you know, Robinhood. These are stocks like Uber, for example. They expected it was going to go up to $45, 50 The thing then tanked because it's all, once it goes public, you have to start showing your revenue. I mean, it's very, very intensive, right? You have the Sarbanes-Oxley onto it, the reporting requirements that go to it. You can't hide and lie like you will under a SPAC. And so the whole thing is bullshit. Plus, it's not like he can sell out his stock on day number one. There's a holding yeah, requirement, four months, six months. And by that point in time, the stock is generally devalued. And the worst yeah. thing that he could do would be to try to sell it out. By the way, if you do, you have a short-term capital gain on that too. So you're going to lose more than half of it to Uncle Sam. But you know- Well, Mike, the miss- Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Mike. The mismatch when these people are coming up with this $4 billion number is he's got a year hold on this. And, and a year from now, he may be a twice convicted loser of a presidential election. And what's going to happen to Truth Social then? Then he just becomes another guy, another retiree from Florida and who's, who, or who's, who's serving time either in a Rikers Island home confinement in New York or in a federal penitentiary. Uh, potentially. And yes, he'll tie it up with appeals and this and that. But he could have a Stormy Daniels hush money cover up business record fraud conviction, which is a class E felony. We'll talk, we can talk about that whenever you like. And then we've, he's got, he's, he could have the Jack Smith, Tanya Chutkin. I'm not sure about Mar a Lago, although that's not a hard case to prove. But he's got the Tanya Chutkin DC jury four count, maybe two count election interference case that all gets tried before November 5. And so that could have a major impact. My favorite part of his SPAC is when I read, I did a hot take on this, his SEC filing, the S4, where they had to disclose the long list of bankruptcies for right. almost anything that Donald Trump touched, because they have to disclose that to the investing public and basically say, why would you, I mean, talk about a list when you're taking a new drug or they have it on, on television and they give you the list. This could cause... Uh, I mean, basically, it's like, why would you ever put your money with this person? Look at everything he's ever touched has either been investigated federally, investigated by a state, sued over, or he's left creditors in his wake, hundreds of millions of dollars of creditors in his wake in bankruptcy after bankruptcy after bankruptcy more, after more bankruptcy. Than, more, than, more than that. And they didn't even list all of them, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. When I was going through it with yeah. Ben, 
uh, the other day on Political Beatdown. Uh, we started going through it, and he was reading them off. There's even more that that I know of. I mean, they didn't list Trump, Baja, Mexico, California. That was a license deal that went fucking belly up, or Panama that he lost, or Trump Soho that he lost. But those are neither here nor there. So look, Mike, the hour goes by quick. The one last question I want to ask you, all right? Judge Mershon will be the first judge to ever have a former president in his courtroom. <laughs> with the possibility of being held criminally liable. Hypothetically, jury comes back, conviction. And 34 they sentence counts. him, 34 counts, and they, they convict him. <laughs> whatever the number is, a year, two years, seven years, 20 years, whatever the number might be. What's the likelihood that Mershon would remand him as, and uh, you know, pending appeal? sent him to jail pending the appeal. Because I know in Otisville, when I was there, we had at least a handful, five, six guys I can name off the top of my head that were all incarcerated and pen with you know pending appeals. I think it's I think that just to make sure the audience understands, we're talking about he gets convicted, hasn't yet been sentenced, and or makes an appeal, but does he remand him into the custody of, in this case, Rikers Island or something? I think that's very low. I mean, Karen Friedman McNifflow on our network, former prosecutor number two in the Manhattan DA's office, she's on record, and I have no reason to disbelieve her, that under a class E felony, which is the lowest felony ranking that we have in New York. Um, if he gets a year in incarceration, that would be a lot. Home confinement, six months, maybe. But I, as much as I respect Juan Mershon and everything I've learned about him on Legal AF and through Karen and my own a little bit of experience around him, uh, and he's the right man for the job, the right judge for the job, no doubt about it. But I don't. I, I want to manage expectations here. We don't like this blow smoke or sunshine on the Midas Touch Network. I don't think he's going to remand him. Um, I think he's either going to put him out on bail or bond, um, and then he's going to have to three or four months after the conviction. And there will be a conviction. I don't know if it's all thirty-four counts or thirty-one counts, but there will be a conviction in New York, just as there was a conviction in mm -hmm. front of another jury with the same lawyers. Except I think uh, Todd Blanche is going to have a more active role than Susan Necklace. But just a year and a half ago, same similar witnesses, mm -hmm. although I don't think you testified no. in the tax evasion one, but a similar group of money men that work for Donald Trump will testify here along with you. I would be shocked that jury a year and a half ago, 17 count felony conviction against Trump organization for tax evasion and against Alan Weisselberg. We, you and I know Manhattan juries well and the population in Manhattan. He is going to be convicted. Yeah. But what the judge does next in terms of pre-sentencing uh, pre detention and or the final sentence, I think is no pre-trial, no pre-sentencing detention, and maybe six months home confinement. That's what I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little more. I think it'll probably be a year and a day the way I, the yeah. way I see it. Uh, but the only issue, of course, that the judge has to contend with is – he has properties and money overseas. He has multiple aircrafts and so on. Obviously, they've already taken his passport. But I think that there's going to be much more significant monitoring of him as he flies mm -hmm. around and so on. But Mike Popak, yeah. yeah. Thank you, my brother. You know, um, I'm gonna let me give you the last word here. No, no, there was no last word. I, I I'm very respectful of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thank you for thank you for joining me. Looking forward to joining you one of these days on Legal AF, Absolutely. and of course, both of us being a part of the Mighty Midas Touch Network, killing it. Did you see? I don't know if you saw. You were number forty. I was forty-one. Uh, Midas Touch oh, yeah. was forty-two. Right, all on top podcast so thank you to my so so, right to all of our listeners and so on and i thank you for joining me we're going to definitely be doing this again thank you michael for having me i look forward to having you on legal af looking forward